hi and welcome back to my channel my name is patricia so i'm back again to share the word of god with you and i love it i love how slow but sure we're moving i really love it yeah so let us pray so that whatever we read and whatever we we're going to discuss is not a matter of flesh like how i feel or how i see it or whatever i just want to speak it the way it is so let us pray Father, we thank you. We ask for your wisdom. We worship you. We ask for your wisdom to understand things that are hidden, to understand the mysteries of the word of God. And let us uh, hear from the throne of grace, O oh God. And I pray that let not your word be compromised in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, this is my hair. Today I'm going to read from the book of Daniel. Yeah, it's a book that I love so much as well. So we just want to see how from the beginning, this is the story of Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego that we know very well how well that they were captured and taken to the king to live in Babylon and stuff like that. So, um, but we're looking at uh, how it all started. And in the middle of that, we want to look at Daniel and um, probably Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego, but our main focus is Daniel to see how he resolved in his heart and everything according to the fear that he had for God. I mean, his personal relationship. That's my interest. So we're going to look at um, Daniel chapter 1, verse um, 8. And the Bible reads, But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the Enochs to allow him not to defile himself. And then, at verse 9, the Bible reads, And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the Enochs. So now, you see how, like all the time, I've always emphasized that it's always proper to seek God first and not what comes with God. Because I know that this is the only method, the first method and the most efficient that works than going to God for prosperity and for money. You might receive, but God is a merciful God. But you will go there again, and that's the bad thing. But if you focus on the relationship with God, he takes care of you as you move in your, in your Christian journey. So whatever you need at a particular point, even before you ask, you ask. God provides it for you. And that's the, the advantage. And I wish we could understand this and know and use it. So here we look at Daniel. The Bible said Daniel purported in his heart to say he's not going to defy himself with the foods of the king and the wines and everything that they do. Why? Because he feared God. And why is that? Because he, he valued his relationship that he had with God. And so he knew that if I do this, I'm in a relationship. And if I do this, it's gonna, it's not going to make God happy. So I, I don't, I won't do it because he valued this relationship. So he decided, he resolved that he was, he wasn't going to defile himself. And among him was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And look at it. At verse 9, the Bible says, And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of all these guys that were capturing them and looking after them and had this assignment to take care of all these people and train them according to what the king wanted. And so, so you see, he just purports in his heart. He doesn't go to God and say, God, they've captured us, uh, help me uh, so that I can do. No, he just makes a decision based on the relationship that he has with God. He said, I won't do it because this is defiling to me and to the relationship that I have with God. I'm not supposed to do this. You understand? So he made up his mind. And because of that, God had, had already gone ahead of him. And the Bible says, and God gave Daniel favor. Daniel never asked for favor from God. He only did what was right in the sight of God. And God went ahead of him to grant him favor with those guys, with those people, the Enochs, whatever they call themselves. So you see how God works? Even before Daniel could say, God, we are in problems, or we have problems, have captured us, we don't know these people very well, help us so that we might not lose your, your statutes or whatever. No, he just said, we're not going to do this because it's against what we believe in. It goes contrary to what God instructs us to do. And what does God do? 
and he, the Bible says he purported in his heart, he resolved in his heart. So, and before he could even say it, God had already gone ahead of him, you see, to grant his request. And this is a God that we are serving. And if we have a relationship like this, we'll have nothing to worry about. And if you go on, um, which one is that? There's, um, there's a verse also that I would like to look at. Uh, okay. So. And the Bible says, and in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and the enchanters that were in all his kingdom. But there's also a particular scripture that I'm looking for. It says, okay, 17. He says, as for these four youths, these are youths, young people <laughs> with, with not so much experience in life. These are youths. And it says, as for these four youths, meaning Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God gave them learning and skills in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Do you see what God did for them? That is why these guys were elevated. Their relationship with God was paramount. You see it in the life of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. You see it in the life of Daniel. There's so much humility in these guys that we can learn from. There's so much love for God. And look at the times they were in, very dangerous times under King Nebuchadnezzar. But they said, we won't do it. If we die, we die. We perish, we perish. Let us live that kind of life today. Let us seek God. If we, we, live, if we live like this and treasure Christianity and the relationship that we have with God like these guys, I'm telling you, God is, God is going to do wonders. He's willing. He's going to do wonders in our lives. But if we resolve to say it's by the way, it's a by the way thing. I go to church anyway on Sundays. I was born in a Christian family. On Sundays, you've become religious. It's either you are religious or maybe you are, you are just follow, follow, like the Nigerians will say. If you see crowds, that's where you're going. If you see prophecies, miracles, and wonders, these things won't take you anywhere. It's their salvation and the relationship that you have with God. Confess Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior and get saved. So this is the message that I bring to you today. That let's emulate the life that Daniel lived. The life that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego lived. How they valued their relationship with Jesus Christ. And he never failed them. God never failed them. He was there for them. Even in times of need. Even in problems. He was there for them in the fire. In the lion's den. Because he knew. He had no reason to fail them because he knew he was number one in their lives. Child of God, what makes you think if God is number one in your life, he won't take care of you? He will take care of your school fees. He will take care of your life. He will take care of everything that concerns you. But don't put a pastor before God, no matter how you respect them. Don't put anybody before God. Respect your earthly parents. They are your earthly gods. Honor them as God instructs. But there's a special place for God. Read the word. Obey his commandment. And I'm sure that if you love God and you obey him, it's, go it's not going to be a difficult thing for you to obey your parents, people that are above you, to obey people in authority, even to have a very peaceful relationship with them. Although they flow together. If you are in a good relationship with God, you won't be vulgar. And I've seen many people who follow all these people that do a lot of miracles, they insult, they curse, they do all kinds of things. That's to tell you what kind of things they are learning. They, excuse me. They have no word in them. What they have is what they bring out. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, a man speaketh. But if you read the word of God, you are full of the word of God. You value God. That's what comes out of your mouth. You have no reason to, to, to bring something that is not in you out of you. If it is in you, confess it today. Let it go. Let light enter your heart and let it start raining, which is the light of Jesus Christ who died for you at the cross of Calvary. So thank you for listening to my videos. 
so to my message and for watching my videos i'm sorry thank you for watching my video and for listening to this message i pray that it will help you and bring enlightenment to your soul i love you everybody in case you have not given your life to jesus christ i've done a video please play a role pray it along with me you may play it here on the play uh, on the, my channel it's uploaded already the title is uh, salvation prayer so pray it along with me and give your life to jesus if you feel like you're backslidden or you haven't been working right pray with me and uh, let's embark on this journey together so i love you everybody and god bless you bye